every museum should have a Model T. This is truly how the production line came about. Like we always say, you can get it in any color you want as long as you want black. So the Henry Ford Model T was a critically important piece that made cars available to people all over the United States. This 1914 car was driven by Elijah Hall of Lexington County for a very brief time. As he was driving home, he had some instruction from the dealer. The dealer told him what to do, but he got out of the ruts and he started heading right for the Blackjack Oaks. Sure enough, he did only what he knew how to do. He yelled, whoa, 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 drove that car right off the road. This car was put in a barn and was only driven 18 miles after that point in a few parades. What a great piece that you can see right here on the third floor science and technology area at the State Museum. Electricity in South Carolina is really an interesting story. You know, it wasn't until the Rural Electrification Act late in the 1950s when people finally had electricity in the country. Look at these places and here are some familiar objects, but of course some alien objects to a lot of students. Uh, think about doing your clothes in something that required ringing through um, rubber, or think about hanging your clothes. Of course, a lot of people do that for conservation reasons, but this is something that people did because they had to. So electricity changed all of this, and when you think about Anderson, our first electrified city, think about what it was like to first have gas lights go to electrical lights, and what it was like for folks to be able to be out at nighttime and to have that kind of brightness. It really changed how people lived in South Carolina, and it changed the kind of work they did and the kind of free time that they had to stop doing that kind of work. electricity became available to South Carolinians, you can see a lot of objects were designed and developed specifically to make people's lives easier. And you can look at some of these objects and they're very recognizable to you, I'm sure. Everyone knows what a blender and a mixer looks like. Of course, we know what uh, vacuum cleaners look like. And these are the things that women were using in the household back when women did all of the housework. But look at some of these other objects and maybe you can't identify them. Of course, we have a very strange floor scrubber up here. That floor scrubber looks extremely small. Um, and could only do very small pieces of floor at a time. So people were inventing all kinds of tools that people could use in the household and that way it would reduce the amount of work that you had to do and it really tells the story of electricity in South Carolina and fills out our story about our third floor science and technology in this great building that was the first fully electrified textile mill. Behind me is one of the most important objects on the third floor. This is the 5.6 inch Henry Fitz telescope that was delivered to Due West in 1849. Think about this time in the antebellum period when the South was trying to catch up to some of the northern universities by buying wonderful equipment. This was happening throughout the South, and the purchase of this beautiful Henry Fitz telescope was really unprecedented. This telescope was signed to Erskine College, the only Henry Fitz signed. It is one of about 600 built by Henry Fitz, and it's about one of 50 or 60 that still exist. And what makes it so important is that this is the oldest surviving observatory instrument made in America that's still in existence, and it was in Due West, South Carolina at Erskine College. The third floor science and technology area really reveals the architecture of what is our biggest artifact, which is the building itself. This was the first fully electrified textile mill in the world, opened in 1894. It's a great building and its architecture truly is an amazing piece when you come up to that landing on the third floor which is the most open space in the building.